I started out with super glue on this matte fiber HDPLA just to get the parts stuck together well enough so that I could then go back in with a wood burner and melt together all the seams. This makes for a very strong joint. It does take some time, but these parts won't ever break along those seam lines. Anywhere that there's not quite enough material is a great place to use up some scrap parts. Just pull some material off that, fill it in, smooth it out with the wood burner, and then that will get ground down later to be flush with the rest of the part. The key is to find the right temperature for whatever filament you're working with so that you can melt through quickly without the material burning. The latch piece for this model needs to fit into its groove properly and when the seam was created there's some extra material there that's now keeping it from fitting into its slot so that I had to stand away and ensure that I had a good fit before moving on to the smoothing stage. I repeated the process of gluing and then wood burning on each of the parts. Now for some of the areas, clamps were helpful to hold the pieces in place while the glue set up. I'm not using an activator here, so I do have some working time with the glue so that I can ensure all of these parts fit together before they get permanently adhered. However, because the glue isn't dry, it also allows them to shift out of position, so you do have to keep an eye on that. I ended up using the wood burner to quickly tack the parts in place as I went. Some of these pieces really needed to go together all at once, otherwise they weren't going to slide in very easily. So working one seam at a time, I just did a quick plastic weld and then fit in the next piece and ensure that they, they all did fit together before doing any extensive seam joining. When cutting the model, I did try to take into account where would be the most convenient place to have a seam and where it would provide the best print orientation for each section. I try to melt into the plastic deeply enough to ensure that it's going to be a very strong bond, but I'm also going to be melting it from the back on this front piece. I spent more time on the front trying to get the seams as smooth as possible, so I would have minimal effort later on when I was filling these in with the epoxy. But on the back, it's not as much of a concern because that's not going to be visible, so in that area, it's purely for functional purposes to help make the seams nice and strong. It's better to overbuild the seam slightly with this method because it's easier just to sand down some excess than to have a gap that needs to be filled. And I'm only putting the super glue in the center of each piece. It doesn't need to go out to the edges because I don't want to burn the super glue with the wood burning tool. I just want it in the center to keep the pieces in position while I weld the seams together. This back peg on the mask portion, I didn't plastic weld that in place just yet because I need to make sure that the mechanism is going to work with this before I finalize the positioning. But the peg on the jaw is getting permanently attached since that is just for hanging items from for the secret compartment. Of course, the benefit of having seams that are also plastic, these are not going to shift at all. Sometimes when I have used glue in the past, when there's pressure on the part, it can kind of make the seam come loose somewhat. Even when you fill the cracks with filler primer, it still always seems to come through for me, so I switched completely to using the plastic welding method for this.
This model needs to be test fit now that all the parts are joined together. So to attach the lever into the front panel, I'm using a spring. Now I had to choose one and just cut it down to the right size. It was a little bit too long. But once I got it in place, it held the latch very securely. And actually, I didn't even end up needing a lot of the parts that I had designed into this since the spring did work so well in this case. So I fit the lower jaw onto the track system and I'm screwing it into a board just for testing purposes. And the mechanism does work well. I haven't added the springs at the bottom so it's a bit loud when it hits the bottom. But now that I know everything works, I can go ahead and revise my model, first of all, because I didn't end up needing the side clamps. It was secure with just the center one, and also that bar that was supposed to go across the lever. It just wasn't necessary. It made assembly much more difficult, so I've removed that in the model now. Just the spring was sufficient. I'm also going to just permanently attach that back peg in place, since I know that the positioning is correct now. And now that I know everything works, I can go ahead and start on the smoothing process. For all of the seam lines, I am doing some initial cleanup on those because they are somewhat overbuilt so that I can just remove that excess material and be pretty close to flush before I even start smoothing with epoxy. It's time to add the epoxy now, so I'm using Tabletop Epoxy by Promarine Supply. I tested this product in a previous video to make sure that it works well for this application. So I've mixed up one ounce of the resin, that's part A and part B equal parts by volume. And I'm going to add some black dye. This is so that it's easier to see how thick the resin is going onto the part, because it does tend to pool up in the details, so you can keep track of if you're losing details this way and make sure that that's corrected before the epoxy sets up. I pre-mixed the parts together and then added the dye just to ensure that my epoxy is well mixed. I'm using a chip brush to apply that over all of the parts. I have a small brush to apply this into the horizontal track. This is the piece that the lower jaw slides up and down on. So I'm smoothing the inside somewhat to make sure that I have a really nice fit and to make it a little bit less loud because those print lines sliding against each other is kind of a noisy mechanism. So this will give me the opportunity to smooth that out. I should have removed the bearings here first though. because <laughs> so I was trying to keep those clean as I went, but those would have been easy to remove. So I'm trying to get the epoxy on as fast as I can. There's a pretty good working time on this. I think last time I tested I had, I don't, I don't know, maybe half an hour or something that I was able to work on it. It depends on the ambient temperature, but getting it onto the parts faster, it's going to not heat up in the pot and cure faster. So you just want to kind of get everything on there and then worry about getting it even afterwards. I created this setup to keep the parts off of the cardboard because I don't want them setting in pools of the material. That's a lot more cleanup work later on. So I just used some scrap foam and hot glue to make supports for each of the pieces so they're raised off of my surface. I also coated the vertical brackets so that again I can smooth this out so the mechanism works more quietly and smoothly. 
Once I had all the resin on, I used a heat gun to pop some of those air bubbles, and I just used the brush to continue to spread the resin around in any areas that it started to pool up so that I don't lose my details. But then once it starts to set up, then you're good to go. You can just leave it to cure. I let that cure for a little less than 24 hours. I did have it in a pretty warm area and I also put it in a cardboard box with a heater running on it for a couple of hours. So at this point it's plenty ready to sand. Pretty much had to just do hand sanding with this because the shapes are organic. There's a lot of small areas that you just can't really get into very well with a power tool. So it does take some time to get everything sanded down still, but you get a really good result. And you could also do multiple coats of the epoxy if you're trying to get a super smooth, glossy sort of finish. Uh, in this case, I'm just doing the one coat because I don't need to have this super smooth and polished. And the results from just one coat are really quite good. got my track all smoothed out now I had to remove enough of the epoxy to get just a perfect fit between those two parts so I need to add some hardware to this so I have a very small adapter that's just 3d printed that fits into the bearing and then I have washers for each side of that bearing these fit into that horizontal bracket and get screwed in place The model is designed with very tight clearances here so that it can be sanded down to get an absolutely perfect fit depending on the exact size of the washer. So on this side I still needed to sand that down a bit. I did a test fit. wouldn't quite fit in perfectly so I sanded that down with a very small bit on the Dremel until it had a perfect fit. And I also did smooth that out a bit with this very small sanding stick. But the pieces do need to fit tightly so that they are not sloshing around in there. We just want everything to be perfect. None of these parts will be visible from the front, the uh, track pieces, so I didn't bother covering those in the epoxy. I'm just going to leave the print lines in this case. The matte fiber HDPLA is a really nice finish anyways. So I tightened everything up and now the track is moving smoothly. So I want to add some cushioning to the bottom. I grabbed some springs out of a couple of pens. And those are going to get glued into the bottom of the horizontal track so that when the jaw falls down, they will land on the springs and just cushion that slightly so it's not quite as noisy and so it doesn't jolt the contents too much. Springs that were a little bit longer and firmer would have been nice, but these worked okay. I'm just using Gorilla Glue to put those in place. Of course, Gorilla Glue wants to bubble up as it cures. You just have to keep an eye on it to make sure that it's not getting into any places you don't want it to go. So once that was dry, I can now screw that horizontal bracket into the jaw. There are screw holes on the side, but it also fits together so that there's not too much strain on any small parts. Then that latch gets hooked back in place with the extension spring so that there's pressure holding it into place and that's going to allow the jaw to drop when the latch is pulled. With all of the parts securely joined together and smoothed out, it's time to paint this up and mount it on its final backing board.